is coming soon. My dad was saying a while ago, that little guy, a little boy or girl, talking about how the world's going to be destroyed and Trump's going to destroy everything, you know. I was talking to somebody, I said, you know, people, they say, well, I don't like Trump, I hate Trump. I said, well, do you know him? Yeah. Have you ever talked to him? How do you, how can you hate somebody you don't know? Well, so-and-so told me that. So, how, did they know Trump? Well, uh, I don't think so. How in the world can you hate somebody if you don't know them? Now, people are not like me. Know me before that. Tell me, find out what's bad. And, but, you know what? How do you God is so good. Yeah. I know one thing uh, for sure that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. There is hundreds of thousands of millions of books out there that have been written over years uh, about religion. 
This book is not about religion. The Bible, they say, oh, yes, it is. No, it's not. This book is not about, it's about life. It's about happiness. It's about success. Uh, and it's about knowing who you are. You have to know who you are before you really know who God is. And God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And I don't care what the world says. Uh, I don't care what the atheist says or what the unbeliever says. Uh, God is still in control. And he's going to stay in control. And I'm so glad that he knows what he's doing. This morning I want to spend a few moments on a subject from the Old Testament which is familiar to everybody. What do you mean? Yes? It's something that during the realm of uh, Obama, uh, they tried to destroy it. They tried to take it off of the buildings in Washington, D.C. They tried to take it off of the state houses. They did. It was a simple, what we call the Ten Commandments. The Ten Commandments. Obama administration, they tried to destroy it. But you know what? <laughs> they didn't get it done. And now that we've got a man in the office now, that honors the Ten Commandments, you're not going to hear a word about it. I'll guarantee you, because he's going to lower the boom on anybody that's going to say, hey, take the Ten Commandments off. In God we trust, take it off of our money. Take it off. We don't need it. We're, we're sufficient in ourselves. We are gods into ourselves. And that's what the problem has been. Man has, the, has this crazy idea that they're God. They're God. No, you're not God. I'm not God. But we can know him as God. And we can serve him because of it. If you have your Bible, turn to Exodus, the 20th chapter. Now, this is something I, I'm going to deal with this a little differently than what you have ever heard. So don't throw rocks at me. Keep your hands out of your pocket. We got some. I'm going to deal with this a little further. Exodus, the 20th chapter. Now, in Deuteronomy, also tells about the Ten Commandments, but here it goes on the Exodus starts with him. And God spake all these things we were saying. I am the Lord. Now, here's, here's God speaking here. I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Amen. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in the heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the sea, earth, under the earth. Don't make nothing that anywhere. <laughs> Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them, for I, the Lord thy God, am a what? Jealous. A jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. And that's been so true. That is true. And showing mercy unto thousands of them that what? That love me. And keep my commandments. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. For the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. The Bible did every day as I'm in the Sabbath day. <laughs> that's what I mean. That's how, that's how I look at it. He didn't say, oh, oh, Sabbath day is just on Saturday. No, it's not. It's every day. Jesus took care of that. Six days I of labor and do all my work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord, thy, our Lord thy God. In thou shalt not, not do any work thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, nor thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor the stranger that's with me. In other words, he says, just, just what's, what God is saying is just take a chance to stop and breathe. <laughs> take a stand in your life, take the day, take, take the time to stop and breathe and, and relax. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and honor thy father and thy mother. I like that. You know, 
that now all you kids, you remember that. Honor your father and your mother, that thy days may be long upon the land that the Lord thy God is giveth thee. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. In other words, be, be nice to your neighbors, even though your neighbors aren't too nice to you sometimes, you still, you still have to be nice to them. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his maid, manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is in thy that's the neighbor. In other words, you hate yourself. And all the people, I think I feel it, and all the people that are saw the thunderings and the lightnings and the noise of the trumpet uh, and the mountain of smoking, and when the people saw it, they removed and stood afar off. Uh, just take a little uh, stop for a moment and visualize what was going on here. Moses had just come down and God had just talked to him. And there was a, you know, when the, when the, when the, when the, when the Holy Ghost begins to move, something happens. I don't care what you just say. God in control, and when he moves, you're going to know it. And they said unto Moses, No, speak thou with us, uh, and we will hear. But let not God speak with us, for he's going to kill us, unless we die. And Moses said unto the people, Fear not. <laughs> I like that, don't you? For God has come to prove you, and that his fear, or his respect, or his honor, may be before your faces, that he sinned not. And the people stood afar off, and Moses drew near unto the none too thick darkness where God was. Then I will slow stop there. Father, we thank you for your love and for your word, and that you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. And you never change. And your, your love for us is solid, is secure, is permanent. It's not fragile like human love, but God, your love is solid and it never changes. For you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. I thank you, Father, for each and every one for this opportunity here to gather into this small building here in order to hear your word and to be with God's people and to worship you in spirit and in truth. Yes, in Jesus' name, amen. I want to say something about the Ten Commandments. The Ten Commandments are not the Ten Demandments. Now there's a difference between a demand and a command. You say, well, what do you mean? A command can be a number. You don't have to. Believe it, you don't have to have, it. you know, it's not, it's not forced on you. But if it was the Ten Demandments, you would have no choice. If God said, Moses, I'm making a de demand upon these people to serve me, or they were scared for, for just the commandments, they, they shake you in their boots, and they were saying, Moses, no, 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 no. We, we want you to speak for us. We want, we want to hold on to you because uh, uh, no, 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 no. God, God's going to kill us. Moses, and Moses said, no, no, no. God's not going to kill you. You might kill yourself. A lot of people kill themselves through their unbelief, through their doubt, through their fear. But a command is something that you can say no to. Well, no, you can't. If you're in the military, they give you command, you, you better obey it. Well, that's true, but you can still say no to it. A demand, you don't say no to it. A demand pushes, a command leads. God is saying to you, to people at this time, see, the Ten Commandments are given as a foundation for our belief. We go to the Old Testament and we see what happened in the Old Testament. The children of Israel, one day they were serving God, and the next day they were cursing God. One day they were worshiping this old uh, Balaam, uh, Balaam, which is an idol of the flesh, Baal, 
Balaam was the fleshly idol of, the, of that day, the sexual, sinful, lustful idol of that day. And it pleased the flesh, and the old flesh likes to be pleased. The flesh demands, the flesh demands. You got to do this, you got to do it. And a lot of people say, okay, okay. But no, no. God is not a God of a demand. He is the God of command. He tells us how to live our life, how to live a happy life, how to be successful, how to have a successful marriage. Now you go, how, how can you, how do you know? Well, we just celebrated our 69th wedding anniversary just a few days ago, or 69. He said, well, that's impossible. Nobody, nobody had stayed married that long. Oh, yes, they do. Hi. How did you do it? Well, we did it because of God. We trusted God. Before we got, after we got married, I'll be, I'll be careful. Before, and our wedding day, the what we did, that's the secret to begin. We, we, before we went to bed that night, what did we do? <coughs> we got kneeled by our bed, kneeled down and prayed, God, <coughs> help us. He said, well, that's not, that, 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 that didn't work. Oh, well, yes, it did. If you call upon God, and I'm, I'm there's, like I said, this is not a religious book. This is a book of life. How to live a happy, successful life. Jesus made a way. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh into the Father but by me. I don't care how many wonderful philosophers, how many wonderful, strong, uh, uh, popular, famous men out there that have written books about religion uh, and they have said, this is how you do it. Uh, and they don't know what they're talking about. Jesus is the way. Jesus is the only one that give us can give us eternal life. I know Mohammed said, well, you can serve me. Or Buddha says, well, you be a Buddhist and you're going to have eternal life. And Hinduism says, well, Hinduism says that. And atheists said, there is no such thing as God. But strange thing uh, about atheism, uh, I identify an atheist on the front line in the battlefield wherever I shoot at him. They all, they all turn to God. They think they got God. Jesus is what it's all about. And this Bible, they call it the Bible, yes. But it is a book of life. A book of success. You're having problems in your marriage. You turn to the book of success. Proverbs, song, tells you exactly how to handle any situation in your family. How to handle any situation. It tells you how to raise your kids. Try to raise your kids without the Bible, and you'll get dummies like Daniel ran right into the other day. Show your children how to serve the Lord. Now, we're not, <laughs> our family is not perfect. <laughs> I wish I could say we never, we never made mistakes. But we have. We've been wrong at times. And when you're wrong, admit you're wrong and move on. Don't just stand there with your feet stuck in the mud and say, oh, this is what I believe and I'm not moving now because so-and-so told me that's right. I don't care if the, if the president, had, I like Donald Trump, he's a wonderful man. I don't care. If he came and told you that, hey, what he says is right, no. Only God is right. Only God has all the answers. But you know, we have an anchor of steadfast and sure. But Chamber Rowe wrote a song years ago. What was that song? Born to Serve the Lord. Did he write that? He was born to serve the Lord. Oh, that's a beautiful song. Poor old Bud Chambers. He had problems. He wasn't perfect, but he loved God. But he had, you know, just because you love the Lord, you're going to have problems. No, I've got problems. You know, it's old, you're perfect. No, 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 I wish I had. No, no, I don't want to be perfect. Because the, the only perfect man in the world is crucified. And I, I want to live a little while longer. But we can work it out. Paul, the Apostle Paul in his life, he says, I have not yet attained to the place that I want to be in God. But he says, I'm working at it. <laughs> it's something we work at. 
The Bible says, work out your own salvation with what? With fear and trembling. Now that fear is not one that pushes the people away. That fear is the beautiful awe and splendor of God. When we fear God, we don't draw back from God. The, 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 the godly fear that we have toward God, it draws you to God. It draws, and, and these people that seem to have all the answers, sir, they, you believe like I believe. If you don't believe like I believe, you're going to, you're, you're wrong. No. I have the right to believe as I want to. Listen to me. You have the right to believe like you want to. And I cannot tell you that you can't believe that way. And you can't tell me that I can't believe this way. And that's what's wrong with the world today. The protesters, marchers, they want you. You have to believe what we believe or we're going to kill you. Well, that's no fun. Hey, you're taking away my right to believe like I want to. And I'm not going to take your right away to believe. Well, I don't believe in the Bible. I believe in, in other books also. Look, that's fine if you want to do that. But you'll be sorry. There's only one book in the world that tells you how to get to heaven. And that's the Word of God. It is the book of life. The Word of God. Hallelujah. That's just another book on religion. No, it's not. It is not another book on religion. Did you hear that? Do you understand that? Get a sink into your little mind? This is not a book. Jesus. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and what? The Word was God. And it was recorded. The Bible is still the Word of God. Is to be called the Bible. Yes, we have to identify it. We identify it as the Bible. But it's still the best seller in the world today. It's still it has only why? Because it is not just a bunch of dead letters, it is a bunch of living, vibrant, strong book words. Living words. Living. It's living. Oh, they, they have a living Bible on now. That's supposed to make it better. No, no. You can't. You cannot improve on perfection. God is perfect. God is love. God loves me. God loves you. I don't care. People hate God. <laughs> it, it, it just doesn't make sense. You know, people are the most. People, the human race. Here we go. The human race is the most strange creature that God created. Animals have more sense than human beings sometimes. You know that? You say, well, well no, they don't. They, they, well, that's the hate. Sometimes the little animals have a lot more common sense than human beings. You say, well, well, well what can we do about it? We walk in the light as he is in the light. We receive from God the instruction. This is a, a football season is starting up, right? Yes. Hey, yes, Chris is here. How do they play? How do they play football? What do they have? Do they have any guidelines? Do they have a playbook? Do they have this? You just don't go out there and run around the field and do what you want to. You obey the rules or you're benched or you're gone. Yep. This is a playbook of life. It tells us how to live life successfully. How to know that God is God. And how, what is life all about? The old song we just sing, uh, life is like a mountain railroad <laughs> with an engineer in his grave. <laughs> Eye upon the and hand upon the throttle and his eye upon the rail. <laughs> and this is what it's all about. It's a playbook. How to get through life. How to come out at the end happy, successful, and not regretting. Huh? A lot of people like to you know how to make you know what you know how to make God laugh? How to make God laugh? Tell him your plans. Tell him what your plans are. He'll laugh at you. Right. <laughs> In him we live, we move, and we have our being. 
in here, not in our own intellect. God doesn't want my knowledge. God doesn't want to put what I know. All God needs from me is my big mouth. He needs a voice. And every one of us has a voice. You have a voice to let people know, hey, so like my dad, that little kid, <laughs> hey, 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 cool, you know. There's thousands of millions of people like that. Oh, we're going to be destroyed. Oh, yeah, I heard that too years ago when the earth is going to be destroyed. Well, let me tell you, it is. We are here. How much more time do I have? Oh, I want some more time. I'll quit. I'll quit. We are living in a civilization now, a dispensation of time. Understand that? We are living in a dispensation of time. How long? There has been other dispensation of times before us. Yep. The scientists have discovered civilizations that have disappeared thousands and thousands of years ago. They, we, and we are living our dispensation of time starting with Adam and Eve. Now, how long was the time period between Adam and Eve and the creation of the earth? Nobody knows, they just guess. But we are now living in a dispensation, and this is going to come to an end. Yes, it is. Oh no, we're going to keep on going. No, you're not. This dispensation, and it's come, and it's called, and the Bible tells us exactly what it's going to be. It's the coming of the Lord. Amen. Jesus is coming soon, and this dispensation of time is going to end. Yes. I don't care who told you differently. You better believe what I'm telling you right now. This, this, and as far as we understand history, I love history. History is one of my favorite studies and, and, and a, a subject in, in school. I love history. Because if we don't learn from our mistakes, we're going to keep making them over and over and over again. We learn by our mistakes. And history tells us certain time limits. 2,000 years from that, 2,000 years from that, 2,000 years from that. And let me tell you, we are coming to the end. And let me, Jesus is coming soon. And then this dispensation of time, what we know as time, and dispensation of civilization, and as we know of civilization, is going to be a complete change. Yes. Jesus is coming. There's going to be a thousand year reign. It's going to be completely different. He said, Whoa, what to do? Let me tell you. They are locating cities now. They didn't know how, where they came. They don't know how they got there. And they wouldn't have known except for, except for the satellite images from the sky, the cameras. You know those cameras going around all the time? Well, <laughs> you think they're hidden? Uh-uh, no, no, no. There's cameras in the sky. They're all there. And you say, oh, that's, just, that's all fake. No, it's not, honey. These cameras in the sky are looking down on Earth, and they're seeing things that could not have been seen before by physiological because we're Earthbound. Now, when you're heavenbound up there and looking down, everything does. When you fly, I, I, I've flown many miles, and whatever you do that too, you look down on the Earth and the plane, and everything looks different down there. It, I came in. Every time we fly in the Sacramento, I would look down and it be, where am I? <laughs> well, you're in Sacramento. Don't look like it to me. Don't look like it from the air. But they're seeing things on the ground and even underground that they, scientists cannot explain. They do not know how they afford that was stuff. But many years ago, okay, so what? So what? It was, a, it was a civilization, it was a civilization, it was a civilization at one time just as prosperous as what we are now. They could not, be, they cannot imagine how they could have built those buildings up hundreds and hundreds of thousands of years ago without the mechanical tools that we have today. But they did, like the little bumblebee. The little bumblebee, you can't fly. It's impossible for a bumblebee to fly. Everybody knows it but the bumblebee. Yeah. He just keeps flying. You know, 
And finally, what I want to be with you today is that we're not talking about ten demands that God gave to the children of Israel, but he gave them the ten commandments. And the ten commandments still work today. They are a foundation of our belief. Yes. Jesus says that came. Not to destroy the law or the law of Moses, but he says, I came to fulfill it. Yes. And Christ fulfilled it. Christ fulfilled it. By his death, his burial, his resurrection, and the final fulfillment of the, of the message of Christ is the coming again, and he is coming soon. Yeah. He's coming soon. So we're going to be a big change. And I don't care how what you think, you can think as you like. You can think as much what you want to. But don't tell me I can't think the way I want to think. Don't force on me my thoughts, and I won't force on you your thoughts. But how do we work then? Okay, if someone is in error, what you do, you go to them and say, hey, let me take you by the hand. Let me lead you to a better place. Here, take my hand. I want to lead you over here and show you it's a better life than what you're living with. A lot of people today, they need it. It's what we call a change of lifestyle. We call it being born again. Yes, what's born again? Changing your lifestyle. Quit doing what you're doing and start obeying the commands of God. He said, I'm giving you a command. Now, what are you going to do about it? It's your choice. It's your choice. So, let's stand together, shall we? Hallelujah. I hope I said something that will maybe help you, encourage you to live a godly life. God is love. God loves you. He wants to help you. He wants to bless you. And when he blesses you, thank him for it. We're kind of thankful us people. But I thank every God. I thank God every day. Because who, who he is. Who, who am I? That old song, who am I? That a king would bleed and die for. But he died for me. He died for you. And he wants to take you by the hand and lead you into that place of victory and of happiness and of success. It says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not into your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him. And he will. He will direct your path. Is anyone here this morning who would like special prayer before we close with it?